just like we said in this first service, practical lessons from the issues of life. And because I don't have much time at all, I will just go straight to what I have to say. I told us in the first service that I wanted to look at the practical issue that almost turned the social media upside down some weeks ago when the leading gospel musician, Sister Sinachin Wachiku, when she passed on, and initially it was said she had um, throat cancer. Later, information came that she was actually an object of um, domestic violence, and that her husband was the one that beat her to the level that she died. And unfortunately, even up to the time that she died, the pastor was not even aware that the guy was doing that. And you know, a lot of in fact, the, the, the social media was literally on fire during that period. Like I said in the first service, everybody became emergency marriage counselors. We went from one error into a deeper error. And you know, they, 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 there's nothing you can do about the truth. There are two things you can do to the truth. It's either you accept it or you live it. Like I used to say, no matter what anybody says, some people are enjoying their marriage. That's the truth. No matter what anybody says, God will never change his word that he hates divorce. So I want you to listen very well to what I want to say. But the truth is that every time we run away from God's word, we are running away from the truth. And that is where, that's the genesis of our problem. And I was just imagining, they said the woman was married for 10 years. I was imagining that, let's assume that like a week or two weeks to our wedding, she cancelled that wedding. She said, Sinachi probably would have been around for us today. We would have still been benefiting from our ministry today. But unfortunately, she's not here. After her death, her YouTube channel was growing like mad. Of what use? The very anointed, the very powerful woman. I remember for a year, I was listening to that uh, uh, equipment, uh, the version of that uh, ego part. Because we were trying to score it for the choir in my church. We couldn't get an ego singer. So I just I just loved listening to that for a year. Uh, so I know her very well. So when I heard, I was like, wow. I begin to wonder what, what, what is wrong. And a lot of people have said a lot of things, but I'll try to say as much I can within the time I have. A lot of people have said things like, oh, men are not trained. A lot of women are being trained more than men. So trained women are being spoiled by untrained men. A lot of things, people have said a whole lot. And that's why I'm going to be addressing men first before addressing women this morning by the grace of the Almighty God. Because I feel that there are some things we need to understand straight up. You see, when God gave instruction to the man, Husbands love your wife. Let me tell you something. Thank God, Pastor Pussy already said something about ice cream, so I want to use ice cream for the illustration. You know that ice cream is naturally sweet. So there's no way God can command me to lick ice cream because it is sweet. Now, the kind of things that you are commanded to lick or to like are things that are naturally sweet. Now, I want you to understand this. If women are naturally, naturally lovable, God will not need to instruct men to love them. God knew that there would be more than enough reasons for a woman to annoy him. That's why he told the man ahead that listen, this woman, love her. And before the guy will wrap his head around, love her as in wife, he said, as Christ. What kind of look at how far God took it. As Christ loves the church, that is how you should love this woman. Meaning. If the madam is not behaving well, and God is telling, the man is telling God, my wife is not behaving well, there's only one answer that will come from heaven. Love her. She is very disobedient. 
She talks anyhow. The only answer he will get from heaven is love her. Because he has already said, as Christ loves the church. Now, the question is, how much, how does Christ love the church? The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Meaning, in advance, we had a guest inside my church. That's the best illustration I can give. And it is here. And he told us, his wife did something that got him very angry. He was praying in the dead of night, and God told him, and I want ladies, particularly single ladies, to listen. Because ladies are the ones that hate themselves with so much passion. I've never seen it before. We are coming back to that. Now, the man of God was praying. And God told him, go away with your wife. The wife was 100% at fault on the issue. So he was wondering, why should I wake up? Wake up or what? Is he wake up to slap her or what? So he now said, God said, wait her to apologize to her. So he was wondering, how? Why? He now started explaining to the Holy Spirit <laughs> what happened. I want you to follow me up through life. That this is what this woman did. She did this. I know we do that a lot. Even when we are praying to God, we are quoting scriptures to the God that wrote the scripture. <laughs> you know that see what happened, see what happened, see what happened. And God said, I've heard you. Call her and apologize. But I'm not the one that you apologize. Is the one. I never said you are the one at fault. I'm only telling you that the solution to this is you apologizing. And he was like, no, this is not making sense. Christianity doesn't make sense in the first place. That's why we are called believers. If it makes sense, the world will not be believer. Believer means you believe the word of God as it, even if it sounds stupid. I'm a believer anyway, so I believe. So he said, when he woke the wife up, you can imagine the woman that is guilty. When he now apologized, he said, okay, no problem. <laughs> you can imagine how annoyed you are apologizing to somebody that is guilty and she's still feeling like a mad woman. And he said, issues have never remained the same. They are enjoying themselves now. But you know that it takes a spiritual man to do that. How many women are ready to marry a spiritual woman today? That's the question. When you talk with an average single lady, they will tell you that the brothers are the worst. They are not ready to marry a Christian. They are not ready to marry, you know, I was in Leeds City University a few weeks ago. I was telling them, when you listen to an average young lady, there's a, there's a standard you will always hear. Love language. My love language, my love language, my love language. And I have to go and do research. And I discovered that there's a man called Gary Chapman. Gary Chapman wrote the book, Five Love Languages. And he said a whole lot. But you see, my own shocking discovery was that out of the five love languages, there's none of it that has anything to do with God or spirituality. Words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving of gifts. Five love languages. I see that's what will make the marriage to work. I see that's what will make the relationship to work. There's no aspect of God. And God is the one that created relationship. God is the one that said it is not good for the man to be alone. And now we are removing him from the equation. How will it work? If you go into the book of uh, Genesis chapter 24, Verse 67. Can we have that? Genesis 24, 67. That's a very simple verse, but it's loaded with a whole lot of things. Isaac brought her into his mother's the Sarah's tent. That's all I need. Isaac is ah, there is talking about his wife. Into his mother's tent. And this is the major reason why. A lot of mother-in-laws are never at peace with their son's wife. Because normally, if you are married properly, there should be a relocation in your heart about where your mother used to be. Your mother is supposed to re sorry, your wife is supposed to replace your mother. And because of that, a lot of women react. Even though they replace their husbands, they will forget by the time they have a son. So now, 
Where I'm going is uh, Isaac did this. If you ask any man, they will tell you who is the person that annoys you most in this life. That as what you grow over time, that even if you become a president, she don't send you. That's your mom. If you become a president, it doesn't mean anything. You are still a baby. Now, out of all the times your mom has annoyed you, how come you have never slapped her before? How come you have never been tempted to beat her before? It's only because of one reason. The position where she occupies in your heart. Because many times, your mom will even tell you that. Why are you looking like that? You want to beat me. You have no choice that you smile. You know, even though you are not happy, but there's nothing you can do about it because of the level of respect you have for her. So how come the woman that is supposed to replace her in your heart is now an object to be slapped? Some of us that receive sufficient beating growing up, we know that by the time a child is getting to SS1, SS2, do you still beat such a child? If something is not really wrong with you as a parent, the child is now 18, 20. We used to continue beating the child when he has got to that level. So, how come a 42 year old woman, mother of four, will not do something and the man cannot think of anything that will be as if the, the girl or the madam is his child? And that's why in, in, in I've attended some traditional wedding, they tell you when they are returning the dowry to the man, they tell him that we are not selling our daughter because they expect you to have enough sense to take care of her as your sister, as your mother, as your daughter, all rolled in one. But these things can only be fully adhered to when you are in God. Because, like I said, Adam did not pray to God to ask for a wife. It was God that looked at him and said that you actually need a wife. But the issue is that many times we think we can, we are smarter than God. We think we can do things. You know, many times the church will say, okay, if you are in a relationship, just like Pastor Koshi was saying it like a joke. You know, many of us think that all these pastors want to control our lives. We are adults, man. What's their business? When we are ready for marriage, we will come. And if we have not told you, we have not told you, we are not ready to tell you. Who is going to suffer it? When you check people that their marriage are working, there are two things. God and the fact that people are submitted under mentorship. A lot of ladies are dating men that nobody can call them to honor. Evangelist Kolari said, okay, we said something at church last year. He said, some guys will say that we don't fear uh, men, we fear God. He said, you better run for your life as a lady. A man that cannot fear men cannot fear God that he cannot see. A lot of those people, there are people that bring them under control. He told us, now what usually happens is an average man thinks what makes him a man is that nobody can call him to order. But the truth is that everybody has their own downtime. That's why the place of mentorship cannot be overemphasized. There are people's names that when you hear, it resets your brain. And that is why you cannot afford to say you are in a relationship with a guy. Who is the mentor of the guy? Who is the mentor of your relationship? Nobody. So when the guy starts misbehaving, who do you report to? Some even say, don't ever go and tell my matter to pastor. Whereas people design their own uh, friendship, people around them that are friends or that are mentors, to put their life in order. So you cannot do this thing just all by yourself. Fine, you have a relationship with God, but you need people to put you in check. There are somebody, Evangelical, Colorado, go to all that. If his wife tells him something now and said, I'm going to see Baba on Sunday. 
He said he will start begging his auntie, no matter what it is. Because he understands the implication of that. Is he not man enough? Is he, not, is he a small boy? Is he, not, is, is, is he not a matured man? So if you think we can do these things for ourselves, we are going to run into trouble. You can imagine somebody that cannot create an aunt beating a woman, the mother of your daughter, the sort of mother of your children, to death. No matter what happens, that's the saddest part. She's something that she's not coming back. No matter what anybody says, she cannot come back. No matter how anointed she was, she is dead. So it is for us to draw lessons from things like that. Like I said, the saddest part for me was that it is the singles that were yarning dogs online. It's the singles that were even talking about don't uh, tolerate an abusive marriage, whatever, whatever, as true, as correct as those statements were. Is that your own business? Are you married? What are you putting in place to ensure you don't fall into that kind of a mess? Are you adjoining them to say uh, the value of life is what's that thing I quoted in my you forgot it everywhere? The covenant of life is higher than the covenant of marriage. Everybody on their status, covenant of life is higher than the covenant of marriage. As if that will bring sister of Sinaji back. As if that will save the person posting it. If she's, she's dating and when you now ask them, what kind of a man would you like to marry? TGH. Don't that can ask you. If it's after they have said that, they will not remember that I'm supposed to be a worker. It must be God fearing. <laughs> Just in case Pastor Tosi is somewhere watching this. So I don't look, I'm not a spiritual person. I think if you are married to a spiritual person, it is not in your favor. Which normal man will God instruct to love unconditionally? That's why we say the true love that women expect. Ordinary men don't ask. It is a man that has encountered God that has the capacity. Because you want to obey God. The same thing, they will say men are cheating. And I always laugh when I hear that word, cheat. Somebody that is a natural cheater. He has never been faithful all his life. Even in your country, you guys were having sex. Both of you were cheating on God. What are we talking about? So who is the cheater here? So the lady will not go to God and say, he's cheating on me, and God is like, ah, eh, eh, my <laughs> So you have the infantry. So come and be telling me somebody is cheating on you. So what do you want me to do to you? I should break your own head. So you think you have been cheating on me? I know when you expect a man that doesn't have capacity to be faithful, to be faithful. The man of God told his wife, when the one was like, anytime you're in the car, you're always looking at other girls. And he told her, he said, Madam, better listen and listen well. There's only one reason I don't humanize again. And I can tell you that that reason has nothing to do with you. It's because I am afraid of this God. I don't want to offend him. He said, if it is you, can you see what is happening at your back? The best times I humanized when I was on campus, that was when I had the best relationship. And those girls I dated that time, they can fight for me to help. He's a professional player. That's his area of core competence. So you cannot catch me. That's what he's trying to say. So if it's about being faithful, God ask Joseph now. Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife. Question was, who was his babe that he did not want to cheat on? And they would say that somebody has a beautiful girlfriend. Uh, why, why is he cheating? Is it about beauty? Can a woman have more than two breasts? Can you have more than what? You even discover men cheating. We cheat with somebody up here that you. So it has nothing. It has absolutely nothing to do with your physical beauty. It's a problem the man himself cannot even define. In mathematics, they say when the denominator of a fraction is zero, that fraction is undefined. It's probably no good definition. He himself needs help. And you are angry with him over a problem he cannot solve. And for those that are single, we are asking you, what are you putting in place to marry a man, not to marry a man that is a disaster going somewhere to happen? You are saying that all those born again. He doesn't understand my love language. You don't know that the one that understands love language most of the time is because he has humanized since he was 12. One of my girls told me a story, I can't forget. A boyfriend sent her a message. She couldn't sleep all night. You know, some boys are good in crafting words. 
just because of one test. He couldn't sleep all night. So he now said, she told me herself, one day she was now with the guy's phone. Only for her to discover that the same test <laughs> that made her not to sleep all night was folded to six different ladies. The guy was just changing it. So that means six different ladies didn't sleep overnight because of the same text. Then you think one. Three dollar cash then. Praise the Lord. So that is why if you really want to love, you can't remove God from the equation. Joseph has no reason. Do you know the most authentic uh, the most authentic uh, if there's anything called most authentic sex to have that you are sure that there won't be a problem if it's a married woman you know what will happen? because she's the only one that knows when her husband cannot be around so Joseph is actually safe if you are looking at the physical so if it's the married woman that is telling Joseph that come and sleep with me free food, no problem she will even give him money she will add a lot of things for him. But because this guy has a covenant with the God of Israel, he knows that this issue is not about not being faithful to my boss alone, even though he mentioned that. But it is much more about the fact that I cannot afford to offend this God. And that was why he ran. So it's not an issue of the guy, I'm, I'm trying my best. I hear him say all that. I don't know what he wants. Somebody that doesn't know what he himself wants. So we can't continue to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. Even in management, it is called insanity. So if you want a different thing, you have to change the way you do things. So if you are a guy, you are in the house, your role model should be a Joseph. Some of us, women as well even come to give us free food. We are the one disturbing them. And like I used to joke, I told them in city. I think I've said it here too before. A lot of men do not get on the day of judgment. They now be saying that it is girls that make me to misbehave. And they'll say that, okay, we what way did they make you to, to misbehave? He said that I tried my best. I wasn't chasing them. They were the one chasing me. And I said, you'll be shocked. God will just shout, Joseph! Come and listen to this crowd. And Joseph will now ask you, Ross, what's it happen? You now say, my brother, what happened was, I just tried to explain to Baba God that uh, it is all there, they were too hot for me. So I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. He said, Joseph will now say that, oh, did any of them grab your shirt? He said, no, it was the way they are doing their eyes. Joseph will say, you are sick. Did you read my story? Mrs. Potiphar did not use eyes only. The Bible says, Mrs. Potiphar was using eyes, using eyes. After a while, she grabbed his clothes. And this guy knows, like I've always said, he knows that if I sleep with Potiphar's wife, God is merciful, he will forgive me. But that forgiveness, I will never become the prime minister in Egypt. So he just removed his clothes, gave it to her. I have a death, a death to destiny. He ran for his dear life. So this will now be looking at you that. So now, come on, I, they do you. You now slept with the whole village. You are not here talking nonsense. That you don't have the self-control. And that is why the divine organogram, I think it's 1 Corinthians 11, 1, if I'm not mistaken. And that's 1 Corinthians 11, 1 or 3. He said the head of every woman is a man. The head of Christ is God. And the head of man is Christ. That is the only way anybody can get true love. God that love, God will ask the love to flow into Christ. Love will flow from Christ into the man. Love will flow from the man to the woman. So now, when a man is effectively disengaged from Christ, you now expect him to keep love. Where will he have it? Just like you are earning 50000 as a man. And your wife is saying, if you love me, transfer 500000 naira to me. How? What's the love? That is exactly what you are asking for as a woman. When you want a man that has not encountered God to be faithful to you. When you expect a man that has not encountered God to be 
performing all the operations of the five love languages. And that is why we cannot but look at scripture. When God said, I hate divorce, there are too many reasons. One of the most, you know, we're talking about parenting in the morning, in the first service. One of the things a child can learn the most is watching two proper parents in the home. There is no teaching that can replace that. I grew up, you know, when I started working in the office, I discovered that's when I started seeing what they call panelists. You know, when you do something, they say they are raising a panel for you. Me, I started facing panel from primary school. My dad and my mom, when they just sit down like that, and they call you, and I see both of them seated. <laughs> I know there is a problem. You not say you should sit down. <laughs> in fact, the moment you see that, just know there is more. Then, when my dad goes this way, this nonsense you have done. Can you try to think? Which day did you ever see me or your mom do anything like this? My dad doesn't beat. But anytime I hear that question, I know the prayer will pray that will make him not to beat me. They never invent the prayer. Because that's the statement that we hear that will make people know that, yay. If I don't have to be saying, I'm not hearing it. I just know my beating time has come. And these are people that are not born again. These are people that I was already over 20 before I knew that they disagree at all. You guys see somebody speaking in tongues and he's beating his wife and he's talking nonsense. And he's telling us that eh, this is, you don't understand. Some, some people are even preaching the gospel, they are divorcing. And they are still telling us that, oh, the, 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 the covenant of life is greater than it. Now, for those that are already in that, you see, there are some things you don't even need pastor to counsel you. If you I fully expect the pastor to come and tell you that you should leave your home. You know, that's not what the Bible says. So it will be very hard. Although there's some very sad situation. A lady went to her parents. These are people that were trained in the scripture, you know. They have been married for over 50 years. She had a problem with her husband. And because of their own training, those who don't know that we are raising different species of people now. They now said, you cannot sleep in this house. We will come tomorrow morning to come and talk to your husband. So go back home, go back home. You cannot sleep there. And she went and she was killed that night. Full life. She was killed that night. Why? Because you don't want to obey God. That's the foundational reason. Because at the end of the day, even when marriage is scattered, even those that are grew up on that proper home, they are still having serious issues. Not to not talk of, they are growing up in a disjointed home. And that's why I'm begging us. You see, because what the devil is doing is that he has used the story of Osidachi to make a lot of us validate nonsense. He has used the story of Osidachi to make many of us believe that, oh, marriage said, is not in marriage is this and that thing is not true god hates divorce there's a reason why that statement is there and my own emphasis is on those that are still single for those that are married to a large extent you don't need to pray and to use your head use your head in the sense that when it becomes violent you don't even need to tell pastor because you are the only one in the house you don't need to even say you don't pass because it might not be available. So that not that not that something will happen, not that is because of Pastor Susan said I should wait. The moment the man has become physical, just know that that is more like an animal, as far as I'm concerned. That, you, so you don't treat him more like a normal human being anymore. That's what the Bible speak English. That's why the Bible will say there are certain things. F L W E. Wrong. That is for those that are married. Those that are not married should be much more concerned with how must I not get myself into this madness, into this mess. Not like a lot of us that we have a perfect idea of how the proposal ceremony will be. But you don't have an idea of how to get a responsible man. If I see a responsible man, can't even recognize one. 
and yet you have an idea of how your boyfriend must propose to you in a way that you not agree. We major in minor, we minor in major. We lay emphasis on things that are not going to last. And that is why the moment you remove God from this equation, my brothers and sisters, it will not help us in any way. Do you know how many sisters in the story was just popular because she's a singer? Do you know how many women die daily? A lady told me a story of so many, in fact, because they said, I told her that, please, I don't want to hear these stories anymore. Because she has a catalog of, she's in the East, she's one of my girls in the East. She said that every day people, they die for that side. Men that don't, are not taking responsibility, married to women that are taking care of them. I know something similar to Sister Zonachi's story. When a man is not man enough, and he begins to react, Numa will go for administration. He's the one that will negotiate the payments and we tell them you pay into my own account before administration and that is the way it was operating but the question is how like like i told them my church last Sunday i said the, the real issue is not even the sincerity of course is not here to be asking this question but for me and for us what are the lessons that we can draw from this what are the things that we have learned what are the things that we are learning Either as a married man, as a single man, as a married woman, as a single lady. What are our lessons? And I pray that the Almighty God will continue to give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Because when we get it right in our relationship, even for those that are married, that is when you will know that you are getting ready to train uh, responsible children. Because the moment you and your spouse, you are not in agreement, you will not be able to train responsible children. Your children love the fact that, they love the fact that when you can come in between daddy and mommy, it's always very sweet. That's one of the first things I discovered. I used to see my father as a very weak man. I go and check most marriages that are working. They will always say the woman is controlling the man. And many times the man wants to prove that it's not true. So he begins to act like a bully. When you ask my mom, dad anything in those days, he'll tell you. What did your mom say? The moment you answer him, he'll just tell you, get out of my sight. <laughs> and what's really of that? Anything your mother has said is what I said. Don't even bother to tell me what it is. I'm not interested. So I knew early that this man is a wicked. But I can't tell you. <laughs> Because my friends in school, we said, my dad came to beat my mom. I'll be like, hey, that's a man. <laughs> I've already grown before I now understood that, oh, that is the original superstar. Because when you know how to handle a woman, that's why God told the man, love this woman unconditionally. But we want to say that, oh, you are doing like a macho man. You are doing like a king Kong. You are doing like all of these things. That doesn't make you a man. God created you as a man to be a protector. God created to be a husband, not a destroyer. An husband means that when you have an interaction with a woman, you make her life better. So are you making a life better? Are you destroying lives? That's my question to us today. And for the ladies too, when you know that your man is not too spiritual, you need to borrow sense. A man has had a bad day at work. Bad day at work. And you too, you are running your mouth. Everybody will not be like Pastor K, my friend. That his wife was wrong. And yet God told him to go and apologize. How many men will do that? So a man that is angry with his life, angry with everything, is not coming. Oh, are you two you are saying that you are a stupid man? He cannot fight his boss at work, but he will use you as an example. And that is why you must manage what you have. So if you are already in marriage, one of the rules is that you must tell yourself the truth. And you are not deceiving yourself. If you are not in it, have a plan. Which must not be outside of God. Understand these things very well. Because I don't believe that that madame that died, it was a time. I don't want to believe so. And like I told somebody, just like I said about the Deborah story, the fact that her husband killed her does not guarantee that she will make heaven. That is even very scary to me. 
So if that kind of man that all of us, anybody is abusing now, now becomes born again, it is going to help you. No matter whether we agree with it, whether we like it, because the Bible says, he that is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away, all things have become new. Take note, not that he that is in church. You can be in church and not be in Christ. Somebody said, no matter how long, a lot of wood has been inside water, it doesn't turn into a crocodile. The fact that you are born in the bakery does not make you a bread. So are you in church or are you in Christ? As I round up, that's the last question I want to ask us. Are you in church or are you in Christ? And let me tell you what we make you to know. It's not in the perfection. Let me give you an example. I've had situations where I am compelled to tell a lie. Now, because I couldn't think of anything else to do. And as a result, I couldn't sleep all night. Scenario one. Scenario two. Somebody else, a Christian, tells a lie. And in reaction, he said, Papa, the boy is going to be working for Can you see the difference between the two of us? One person told a lie, he couldn't sleep overnight. Because he knew that, guy, this is not me. What have I become? Lord, help me have mercy. Another person told a lie. And he said that even Gio should not tell me say no, they lie. Everybody they lie. The first person is a Christian, the second person is not. It's not about perfection, it's about your perfect desire. So even if you are not perfect, you have a perfect desire to be a Christian. Here's my question. Some of us, our mind is so clear. Nothing when we hear, we are already clear that look, nobody is perfect. So you are not even aspiring for it. And that is why when you hear bad story, that was why that story of us is actually trending. A lot of people have problems with marriage in the first place. A lot of people have problems with those that are preaching that are not divorced. So when we now saw a man that killed his wife, it became an excuse for irresponsible preachers to not create a balance in between the two. So I thank God by the message of God. We cannot go from one small error to a bigger error. No responsible preacher would say that a man should beat a woman. That was why I started by saying, she's not even your child. How will you come to the conclusion that you want to beat your wife? How? How? I help with this story. My other brother did something one day, offended my dad. And what happened that day was, he was abusing my mom. And my dad was coming at the back. It was a terrible thing. By the time he finished, my dad finished with him. There was something he said I can't forget. And I didn't understand that grammar. You can talk to your mom anyhow. You don't talk to my wife anyhow. And I was like, what's the name of this one? <laughs> Who is your wife? Who is the mother? And I saw, now, my dad was addressing his first son. He wasn't addressing an external Can you imagine if he was addressing an external man I want to touch his wife? I hope you know that. Let's be rude. He was talking to his own first son, like an enemy, because of his wife. That you can talk to your mom anyhow. You don't talk to my wife anyhow. How many men take ownership like that? Do we even understand all these things that I'm saying? It's my prayer that God will give us understanding. If those of us here, those that are not married, if we enter proper homes, and those that are married, we maintain proper homes. If we make things better, the best way to preach the gospel is by modeling the life. It's not in preaching. That's why the Bible says, if the gospel is it, you hide something from hearing. Sorry, you hide something from sight, not from hearing. So you model Christ by the way you live. I pray God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Let's bow down our heads. And let's begin to talk to God this morning. Father, I've heard your word. Father, come and help me. Father, come and help me, O oh God. I beg your word. The grace to be a true of your word. The grace to be a true of your word, Jesus. Come and give unto me in the name of Jesus. My Father and my God, if you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to listen to me very well. 
We are not preaching religion here. If you really want to have a direct relationship with this God, don't lie to yourself. Don't practice religion. Like I said, the person that is blessed is the person that is in Christ, not the person that is in church. So if you are here, you don't want to go back the same way you have come. I don't have time at all. I want you to raise up your hand. You know that you want to live a better life in Christ. As a young man, you want to be a better husband material. As a husband, proper married man, you want to be a better husband material. As a married woman, you want to be a better wife material. As a single lady, you want to be a better wife material for your husband. You want your life not to remain the same again. You want to have a fresh encounter with this God. I want you to raise up your hand so that we pray together. You don't want to go back the same way you have come. You don't want to go back the same way you have come. You don't want a negative story to be said about your life. If your heart is up, you have nothing to be ashamed of. I want you to come down to the front here so that we pray together. If your heart is up, walk down both into this place. If there is anybody that should be ashamed, it's people that are supposed to come to the front but are pretending to be praying. So if you are